Fishy folks and happy Thursday to you. Welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today's video, kind of a rant, how not to ship fish. Long story short, got some fish in from a subscriber and uh, yeah, not a good thing. Why don't you guys go ahead and uh, grab a snack and a beverage and let's talk about how not to ship fish. Stand by. All right, fishy folks, we're back. Uh, I, I, before I start with the obliteration here, I just, I have to say thank you so much for all those orders last month. Uh, I hit 25,000 subscribers and 1,000 subscribers on the cooking channel. And uh, I had a promo code, thank you 25, 25% off. And you guys really took advantage of it. And I really appreciate it. I had my best month ever, quite a few orders, over $100. Uh, so many orders that, you know, hard to box and ship everything myself, but well worth it. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. All right, enough of that sappy crap. Now for the uh, possible obliteration. So, a couple weeks ago, I don't know, six, five, eight, some weeks ago, <clears throat> I mentioned in a video, I'm looking for some specific strains of guppies, and one of those was black Moscow guppies. Now, the reason I said I'm looking for black Moscow guppies, females actually is, I have seven or eight males for my last drop, and that's it. No females, not a very good breeder apparently, because I got all males, you know how it is. Dumb guy, whatever. So I put that message out, hey, I'm looking for female black Moscow guppies. Now, on a side note, I can buy black Moscow guppies wholesale, usually. Um, I hadn't been able to find them for a couple weeks, so I thought I'd, I'd ask you guys. And a bunch of people said, oh, I have them, I can ship them, I have them, I don't know how to ship, can you drive to Minnesota and get them? No, I'm just, whatever. So this guy, Darren, messaged me and says, hey, I have some black Moscow females I can sell you. We worked out a price for six, and he shipped them. And what was weird about the shipping was I couldn't track it when I looked at the number on the USPS website. Um, it didn't have tracking information. It said tracking, but there was no information. It was very strange. I had never seen it before. I've shipped almost 2,000 boxes and I track a lot of them to just because I want to know what's going on and I've never seen that message. <clears throat> I don't know if there was a glitch at the post office. I don't, I don't know if it was how he shipped them, but long story short, couldn't track it. So the package doesn't show up after two days of shipping. So here's how two day shipping works. If you ship on Monday, then you have Tuesday, and it shows up Wednesday. That's two days. The first day that you ship doesn't really count as a day. Now, I usually get my mail around 10 o'clock, so if you ship around 10 o'clock, two days later, I usually have the package. But anyway, <clears throat> so the box doesn't show up till I think five days later, four or five days later, and it smelled. The box itself smelled like death. And I opened up, of course, all six female black Moscow guppies were dead. I could smell them. And I wasn't happy with how they were bagged, but I'm no expert. I mean, I've only shipped about 2,000 boxes over the last two years. I know how I do it, not how he does it. I've learned from watching other YouTubers. Um, he says he ships all the time on, on uh, Aquabid. I don't know. Anyway, so... Uh, He's like, oh, you know, the post office had a delay, but I will, I'll definitely take care of you. Now, on a side note, if it was me, I would definitely take care of the fish, but I wouldn't pay for shipping. That's something that's not in my control. He offered to pay for shipping. I would take advantage of that. And he, so he, he said, let me see how many I have when I go back to the fish house or fish room or wherever his fish are. And uh, a day or two later, he says, hey, I only have four females I can send you. One of them is really small, so I'm going to charge you for three, I'll refund you for three, and uh, then I'll ship them. Okay, fair enough. I mean, that's business. DOA happens, it's business. Um, so, the next week goes by, I don't hear from him, and uh, I email him and he says, oh, it was too cold, I'll ship next week if the weather cooperates. Now, <clears throat> I get it. The weather i email people all the time it's going to be too cold i think it's going to be too cold what do you think i, I, I try to communicate i'm not always perfect at it all right i'm one guy he sells a lot of akabid maybe he forgot to email me maybe he was too busy life happens not holding it against him <clears throat> following week hey are you gonna ship oh yeah i'll, I'll ship and then he ends up shipping a day later long story short 
from Detroit to New Jersey, it's usually three days for priority. This showed up in two days. Was it priority? Yeah, it was priority. This shows up in two days and um, it sits on my porch for, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours. It was about 45, 50 degrees outside. <clears throat> I get home, uh, my wife brings them inside. I get home a couple hours later. I open the box. Lo and behold, there's four bags, one DOA. So let's do some basic math here, kids. He shipped me 10 fish, seven were dead, 70% DOA. I'm kind of a numbers guy. I do, I used to do analytics primarily only for work. Now I do some other stuff, but still a little bit of a numbers guy. 70% DOA, not good, not good. Okay, benefit of the doubt. <clears throat> the first time, five days in shipping, they died. Now, on a personal note, I've shipped fish that have been alive 11 days. 11 days in the box and they were alive. I was shocked to myself. I thought for sure they'd be dead. I'm gonna go over how I ship in a minute, but I'm gonna show you how he shipped this last box. Now the box of six DOA I threw away immediately because it smelled and my wife would have smashed me. <clears throat> this one I kept in the fish room, so. Uh, three survived, they're in a tank now. They seem to be healthy. Um, they're small, but he told me they were small, so okay. Nothing wrong with the fish. Here's how he shipped them to me. Here's the box. It's probably an expensive box as far as boxes go. My boxes are free. I get them from the post office. Styrofoam, taped 100% around. And when you open it up, this is what I saw, except there were four bags, not three. Not one, that's only one bag. There were four bags, not one bag. So I saved one, the dead one, so I could show you, but four bags here. I'm thinking, where's the heat pack? But you know, maybe it's it's underneath this paper, but first let's, let's look at this bag. So here's the bag of fish. It's dead, it's gross, the water's crappy, but <clears throat> one third water, two thirds air. Okay, that's the right ratio as far as I ship. That's what I've always done. That's what I've always heard from other people, more experienced shippers than me. But in my opinion, this bag is too small because if something happens, if there's a delay, there's probably not enough oxygen in that bag for that fish for longer than three or four days. Now, this was on my porch for two hours after delivery and uh, it, it was a two day shipment. So even like this, the fish should have been okay. Other three uh, were a little sluggish because they were cold, but they're fine. Let's go over the packing in the box. Four bags on top, no heat pack that I can see. The fish are cold. This one temped at about 55 degrees. Darren blamed my wife for leaving them on the porch for two hours. I don't think that's a problem. I think that's a cop out, but that's just me. Again, packing. Paper, lots of paper. Why wasn't the paper on top and the fish underneath? <clears throat> I don't know. Here's where I think this guy screwed up royally. And again, I'm no expert. I do have a pretty good track record though. You can see the box. There's bubble wrap on top of the heat pack that was cold. I think this is a 72 hour heat pack. That's what I use. That's what most people recommend to use when you ship fish but there was this on top. Now, I'm no chemist, but the way these work is they need oxygen to heat up. For the chemical reaction to create heat, they need oxygen. This doesn't let oxygen through. You can't, there's no oxygen through here. Through paper, yes, this is more porous. This will allow airflow, very little airflow, but it will allow airflow. This will not. This was dumb. This was a mistake. Okay, so we have this here. The heat pack's not working. Maybe the fish got cold and died. Well, they were on your porch for two hours before your wife brought them inside. Yeah, that's right, they were. I don't think that did it. I think it was a poor job packing. I want to say inexperienced, but I don't know his experience. So <clears throat> I would have not used this bubble wrap at all. I would have put this in a brown paper lunch bag, which I learned from Corey from Aquarium Co-op like, I don't know, three, four years ago that that's how he packs. Um, and that's what I do now, mostly in my fish room when I ship, I use a brown paper bag. 
I had one day where I was out of brown paper bags. It sucked. I had to like rip newspaper and wrap it around. But you don't want this touching the plastic because the plastic won't let air in. So you wrap it in a brown paper bag, which creates a barrier, which lets air in, which lets these heat up. All right. So I would have, if I had this set up, I would have had a little paper on the bottom, then the heat pack, then the fish, of course the heat pack in a brown paper bag, then the fish, then more paper, then the top. This way the heat pack is as close to the guppies as possible. There's air getting to it. Boom, no problem. But that's just me. Again, just a dumb guy with a camera who ships a lot of fish. All right, folks. <clears throat> Darren. I don't know his last name. I wouldn't buy fish from him, especially when it's cold. I think if the fish were packed properly, I would have had no problem uh, the second, the first shipment, I mean. I, I don't think this is... If you're gonna give somebody a fish and they're gonna go home and uh, drop it in their tank, this is how you can do it. But shipping, I don't think this is good. I wouldn't buy fish like this. If I knew someone packed like this, I wouldn't buy fish. And I won't pack like this. I always use a bag like this. It's about this wide. There's about this much water in it, this much air, and I have good luck. And that's just how I do it. So folks, you do what you want. I will not be buying from this guy again. Not a fan, not a fan of his packing. Fish were okay, nothing special. So that's that. Darren, that's his name. I don't know his last name. He did say, oh, I'm sure you're gonna destroy me on YouTube. I mean, dude, I'm a YouTuber who tells it like it is. I mean, what did you expect? Personally, I think he did it on purpose so I would talk about him, but that's dumb if you ask me. Anyway, enough of me babbling. Have a great day. I think if the fish were packed, I'm gonna start that again. Today's video is gonna be on how not to ship fish. A little bit of a disaster, I may have to wreck someone. Michaelsfishroom.com, and I really appreciate it. All right, now that that sappy crap is out of the way, do me a favor, grab a snack and a beverage. Talk to my buddy, Doug Gray, who's a magnificent, magni All right, so. Uh, what should we talk about? I don't know. I should. Why? It does. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's do 